That is truly phenomenal. Hey there, everyone, today is another magical day and Epcot's got a new addition to it. Check out the brand new fountain or the beginning of the fountain here at the entrance to Epcot. Three glass pillars reaching for the sky. They look in incredible, absolutely incredible. Very thick glass. Unbelievable to see the Epcot logo kind of carved right into them. I love it. I gotta tell you, it's already shaping up to be amazing in my opinion. Now it's not done yet. You can see the walls all around us still up. And it's, as you get closer to the wall, it's harder and harder to see the glass. But eventually it's gonna be a fountain with a beam of light up to the sky, I would imagine at night. It's gonna be quite a sight. For many of us, this is more than a new addition to Epcot. This is the, the promise of tomorrow. Now, when I say that, I'm talking about the changes that are happening as we speak. You can see my new mask right there. I did make this one, I love it. But changes are happening, right? We, there's the unexpected future. We don't know what to expect. Things are scary, absolutely. But some things are still kind of moving forward in directions that we can all smile about. That, that's what I'm talking about. We don't know all the details, but that is just one more glimpse into the future. You know, things happen, bumps in the road, no doubt about it, but positive future right here at Epcot. Yes, okay, starting today off with a smile and I love it. I'm gonna continue with our tours around World Showcase, a deeper dive into some of those countries. We are on to China. As we're making our way in, you can see Anna and Elsa making their way around World Showcase. Always a lot of fun to see them. We did Mexico, went in depth in Norway. Now it's time for China. Let's take a deep dive. The China Pavilion starts right here across the way from Norway. And you can see that some of the theming starts from all the way at the edge of the China Pavilion with these windows. You can tell you're in China right away with the roofing, the windows, and of course, these lamps as well. See kind of the, uh, the gold crown is what I'm calling it on top of those light bows. Right as you walk into China, you'll see there's a building to your left-hand side and then there's a smaller kiosk to your right during the Food and Wine Festival, this is it, the uh, China Food and Wine Festival kiosk. Next to the China Food Kiosk, you'll find a small shop, the House of Good Fortune, I believe it's called, and then next to it, you find the Joy of Tea. The uh, Good Fortune Gifts, excuse me, Good Fortune Gifts, not House of Good Fortune, we'll get back to that. Good Fortune Gifts is usually kind of a store out, out here, a lot of stuff actually sitting outside of the store where you can purchase them right there, a lot of merchandise, not open now, but I'm sure we'll be open again later. Joy of Tea has a lot of options available to you. They've got specialty cocktails, beers, and of course the bubble tea as well. It's not all tea. You can get all sorts of different drinks and some snacks as well right here at the uh, Joy of Tea kiosk. Those pork and vegetable egg rolls here at Joy of Tea look delicious. Something we're going to have to try in the future, no doubt. Now across the way from Joy of Tea and Good Fortune Gifts, we've got that main entryway for the China Pavilion. And just look at this kind of gate as you make your way in. It really is a phenomenal entryway. You can actually see that very large building behind it kind of come into view as we make our way underneath this amazing gate here. It's true immersion, I'm telling you. Now during New Year's, you'll find one of my favorite dance parties right here, literally right right here, dragging up above. But uh, when it's not New Year's, you get a nice quiet walkway as we make our way towards the main building. To the left and right of the entryway, you'll find these small benches where you can sit back and relax. But there's a lot more areas for sitting in China than you might think. The main building is right there. We're actually gonna go down this small passageway over here. It's just meant to kind of be a relaxing walkway here. From time to time, you'll actually find characters meeting back here as well. But look at this kind of quiet seating you can find. Looking for some extra chairs during food and wine? Look no further, benches right here. This quiet pathway continues all the way around. You can kind of hear the tranquil music from China. There's a small waterfall right over here. Look at this. Easily missed details here, I'm telling you. Right underneath this bridge, the waterfall kind of wakes its way over here into the uh, larger waterway. As we make our way along the path here, you can see it kind of leads us to these, I don't know, these small pillars right here, decorated really, really nice. Can't tell, maybe it's a dragon with the claws of a dragon right there, or a, a large lizard creature. Now, as you make your way back towards the entryway, you can see that large gate by the entrance. Again, large building behind us. I'm gonna turn just a little bit here. You can see this large slab, I'm gonna call it a slab, right here in the middle towards that entryway. A lot of art and detail you can tell went into this one, and it kind of makes up the steps as you make your way towards the main building. So we're actually gonna walk up these stairs right here. You see how it kind of takes up half the stairs? It's a decorative piece, but really nice. Now, you can see there's a lot 
to see in the China Pavilion, but we're going to make our way inside. Inside the main building, you'll find Reflections of China, Circle Vision 3D show. Let's actually make our way in there. The authentic feel all around. You can feel it immediately. A beautiful, unbelievable building here. Every small detail inside of China has been thoroughly looked at. I mean, this is it's, it feels metal. It's a colder metal right there. It's not just like a plastic or woodwork. It's unbelievably well themed. And if you look up above, uh, it may just be me, but you see these red pillars right here? They kind of look almost like uh, fireworks to me, like, a, like the pillars for a firework. I don't know. It, it looks cool. You look up above, it kind of is symmetrical, makes that perfect circle right towards the center. And in the center, tough to see, is like a dragon right there. I love that dragon. Now, I believe the shows are just about 15 minutes long, but while you're waiting for the show to start, there's a lot to see in here. The Kid Cot Fun Stop inside China is actually inside of this building right here by this artwork. These look like cherry blossom trees to me right there. As we turn around there, you can see more of the artwork on this right-hand wall. As we make our way over there, look at the carpet here. This is really, really nice. The symbols right there from China, and I believe those are more cherry blossoms in the corner right there. Wow. Beautiful artwork you can find on the walls of different uh, trees and waterfalls and waterways, all made with that uh, authentic Chinese feel. Even on the right-hand side, you see, I'm guessing it's the artist's signature in Chinese or perhaps the local location. Not 100% sure. The theater is located through these doors right over here. This area is actually used for announcing when the show is about to begin. And sometimes you'll actually see a little countdown right there, right there in the middle. It's not on right now, but maybe it will be again in the future. But this is where the uh, cast member will stand just to let you know that it's about to start. Now, before we go in to see the show, I want to take a look inside of this area right here. We're going to look in just a moment, but first I want to show you this quote. Hearing something a hundred times is not as good as seeing it once. Wow. I guess that speaks to video, right? Oh, yay for the vlogs. <laughs> Yeah, all right, let's make our way through. Some of the terracotta warriors welcoming us to this section featuring the Shanghai Disney Resort, an area that I really am looking forward to experiencing in the future. It used to be the terracotta army right there in the middle. It is no longer. It features so much of Shanghai Disneyland. Let's start to the right over here. I love learning about this and experiencing Shanghai Disneyland before we get a chance to go. We're going to go one day. Trust me, we will. One day in the future. But for now, we can kind of look at the stone guardians before we make our way there. You can see they're, they're not exactly like the uh, the creature, but they're similar. See that uh, looks like almost like a vulture or an eagle right there, and maybe a, a lion or a tiger right there. Those are some fierce looking ears there, along with some uh, more gentle crocodile or alligator uh, pieces right there. But you can actually see uh, in Camp Discovery, there is a very large, wait a minute, I'll come over here, here, very large alligator or crocodile looking down on the guests as they make their way around. That sounds like an amazing attraction. This is all part of Adventure Isle in Shanghai Disneyland. We can tell by the sign up above and right there. As we make our way around here, you can see more of the background for Shanghai Disneyland. This uh, photo right here, which is amazing. Look at the castle. That's a castle I'm looking forward to seeing, let me tell you. They also got some of the costumes that the cast members wear. Great costume. Reminds me a lot of the uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party costume that our cast member friends wear. And you can see Owl's Toy Barn right there. That's where this costume can be found. Toy Story Land is very popular in Shanghai Disneyland. And that right there, you see the uh, car going around that loop. That's one I'm so looking forward to when we experience it in the future, you can see Woody and Rex and another costume for Al's Toy Barn. While we're looking at some of those costumes, let's come back over here and look. Oh my gosh, I see Remy on your apron. I would imagine this is the attraction uh, costume for the Ratatouille Adventure, which we're going to get here in Epcot super soon. The confectionery in Shanghai Disneyland is called Sweetheart's Confectionery, and this is the outfit that you might see worn, a great one. Laughing Monkey Traders. I would imagine that's similar to our Trader Sam's, perhaps? or Adventureland style gift shop. Another great costume. In the center, you can find the Fantasia Carousel sculptures right there. Love seeing them. And then look at these miniatures. That's great. Oh my gosh, super cute. I see Pluto. I see Rabbit. I see a snake right there. Of course, we've got Ham with a coin in hand. Wow, fantastic. Moving along here, there's Remy. There's a little cow, Tigger. Oh my gosh, Abu, these are great. Those are ones I'm definitely gonna have to look for when we get to Shanghai Disneyland in the future. Behind this exhibit, you can find the Gardens of Imagination, which is uh, this area in Shanghai Disneyland, including the Wandering Moon 
tea house with what looks like to me an unbelievable view of the castle where you enjoy your tea. Now we're learning more about those smaller characters that we saw in the small exhibit, Tigger and the ox, the snake, talking about some of the uh, important animals in Chinese culture. We're learning more about those as we go all the way around here, learning a lot about them. The Gardens of Imagination, I'm learning, actually lead you to seven original gardens. Garden of the Twelve Friends, Melody Garden, Romance Garden, Woodlawn Garden, Garden of the Magic Feather, Fantasia Garden, and Storybook Castle Garden. All areas I'm looking forward to seeing real soon. Let's take a closer look at Fantasyland of Shanghai Disneyland. Fantasyland features the Alice in Wonderland maze. That is one I definitely need to see in the future. Kind of a steampunk style with these characters right here. That is super unique. I don't think I've seen one of those in a Disney park before. That'll be so fun when we experience that together. Peter Pan's Flight and of course Voyage to the Crystal Grotto. This is one that I've heard a lot about. Rapunzel, Flynn Rider will definitely experience it when we go one day in the future. This mosaic is a full-scale portion of the mosaic that is displayed in Enchanted Tor Storybook Castle. And to look at it, you can see the small stones that make up all of Rapunzel right there. Similar to what we've seen at the Riviera with some of that artwork. It's amazing. Enchanted Storybook Castle is the largest castle that Disney has ever made, and it is truly awe-inspiring. Just look at it here. Inside, can you imagine? I can only imagine walking in there, taking a look. Wow. Here are a few more costumes from Shanghai Disneyland. This one's for Alice in Wonderland's Maze, a host costume. And another host costume, you can guess where that one's from, Pirates of the Caribbean. Really great one. Speaking of Pirates of the Caribbean, it takes us to Treasure Cove, and I've heard that the Pirates inside Shanghai Disneyland is unlike any we've ever experienced before. One that I am so excited about in the future. You can see the story continues in this small exhibit area right here. You can see you actually go through as the Pirates are battling. I try not to look at the spoilers for myself because I just I want to be surprised when I see it. I, I really do. So I'm trying not to, to spoil it, but I'm telling you, I'm so, so excited to experience this attraction when we get there. Speaking of classic attractions that Disney Disney has brought to the next level at Shanghai Disneyland, Buzz Lightyear's Planet Rescue, I've heard, is unlike anything at Disneyland or Walt Disney World. One that I cannot wait to experience in the future. You go through, you blast those aliens, you defeat the evil Emperor Zurg, and you have a great time. I can't wait. An attraction that was so popular that Disney knew they had to bring it to Walt Disney World. Tron Light Cycle Power Run. What better way to introduce it than Mickey on a light cycle? He's even got a controller right there. I have a feeling we're going to see this merchandise at Walt Disney World in the future. It looks amazing. You even got the ears right there for Tron as well. And you can actually see the walkthrough area right there where the guests can kind of walk around and then learn more about Tron and Tomorrowland and a lot more there to see. Just imagine taking a seat on that bike right there. The back panel closes down on you and then you blast off into the grid. It looks like an unbelievable experience. I'm so glad they bring it to Walt Disney World. So glad. This is one. I love the Tron movie. The, the, the the newer one, the newer Tron movie. Huge, huge fan of it. Can't wait for this. Shanghai Disneyland also features jetpacks, which is this uh, orb right here. It flies you around similar to Dumbo. I would imagine it's a tiny bit faster, however, because the vehicles look like they actually tip back quite a bit there. See that? I would imagine that's probably the case. We'll find out when we get there. Next up, we make our way to Mickey Avenue here, very similar to Main Street USA, or perhaps Mickey's Toontown Fair, what it used to be. It's now the circus, which we enjoy as well. And you can see Goofy about style. You can see the different hairstyles that they have right there. It includes Chippendale's Treehouse Treats, and of course, Ludwig von Drake's Fireworks Factory. I would imagine not real fireworks. That that's, that's what I envisioned, but I do not know. Now we've made our way to Disney Town, which is similar to Downtown Disney at Disneyland or Disney Springs. Shopping and merchandise. You can find violimations of our 12 friends, that Chinese uh, feel to it. You, you know, of course, they've got those 12. Gotta love them. And the grand opening, Mickey and Minnie, kind of a sparkly gold. Wow. Donald Duck, super popular everywhere he goes, not just in the United States. And you can actually see a photo of him right there used in, uh, in advertising for Shanghai Disneyland. Now we come to the Shanghai Disney Resort Hotel 
hotels, ones that I'm looking forward to experiencing in the future. I'm telling you, they've got style, they've got grace, they've got different feels to them in ways that our resorts do as well. You know, there's just different styles for what you're looking for, whether it's Lumiere's Kitchen or kind of a Disneyland feel, King Triton's Pool, whatever it is, they've got different styles. So this is something I'm very, very excited to experience in the future. Now I know I keep talking about the future and we'll get there eventually. Not sure when it will be. Year, maybe years in the future. Not 100% sure, but one day we'll make it. Now let's make our way back outside. Now we made our way outside of the House of the Whispering Willows, which you can get to from outside of the building. You don't have to actually walk through as we did, but you have the option for both. It's raining just a little bit, but you can see some dining experiences right here. Lotus Blossom Cafe. The Lotus Blossom Cafe is the main quick service dining location here inside of the China Pavilion. It's not open at the moment, but we can take a look at their menu. They've got some delicious looking items there. One that I really, really enjoy, the orange chicken. That's, oh my gosh, so, so good. I can't wait to try it again in the future. They've also got specialty drinks and desserts as well, including that panda boba iced tea. Not ready for seating at the moment, but you get the idea of the feel from the outside, kind of the, the, uh, the red kind of tile wall back there, great lights up above. Overall, a great spot to kind of sit back, relax, and enjoy some great food. Now, next to the Lotus Blossom Cafe, you'll find the Nine Dragons restaurant. I have to admit, it's been years since we've been in here. It, it just has. I've got to get back in here. They are also closed at the moment. We can take another look at their menu. A lot of great looking items here. I'm telling you, I'm going to come back. I will come back. Appetizers from $5, entrees $16, and Chinese inspired desserts. They sound really good. We've seen the two dining locations. Now let's move on to the shopping location. The House of Good Fortune is the primary shopping location here inside the China Pavilion. The entrance usually is right through those doors, but we're making our way over here today. Before we make our way to the entrance, Look at the theming all around. Just take that time. Look around. Experience it with me. Take a look at the uh, kind of like the pewter dragons kind of up above. Amazing to see. Outside here, here's another shopping area. Usually open. Not right now, but it will be again. These uh, doors open up and they've got some great puppets that are outside. Taken aback by the theme every single time as I make my way up here. You can see it's raining just a little bit. But such an amazing feel. Such an amazing theme. So many small details. Even here in these windows, we've got these small sculptures here. Elegant, absolutely elegant sculptures. Wow. I know that these on the right hand side look like shops, but believe it or not, they're just for your enjoyment to sit there, have fun together, and uh, see more of the Chinese culture as we walk around and experience this. Now, usually this area is kind of an outdoor shopping section, not open at the moment, but it will be again before you know it. For now, it's being used as the entrance to the main building. Look at this, uh, Large, it looks like a hammer. It looks like an upside down hammer to me. It, maybe it's a gong, not sure, but super cool. Now, before we make our way in there, I wanna turn you around just a little bit so you can experience some of this. This is all outdoor shopping. It will be open again in the future, but there's a photo op I wanna show you right here. To your right, this is actually the exit of the uh, Circle Vision show, but as you exit, take a look to your right here. Look at this painting on the wall. They've got that giant wave, kind of the classic wave painting for China, and they've got the koi fish there as well. Now, someone's gonna have to confirm this for me. Do you rub his belly for good luck or do you just kind of wave at him for good luck? I don't know. Let me know. I, I heard a rumor that you rub his belly for good luck. Not sure about that. Let me know. Look at those lanterns up above as we make our way into the House of Good Fortune. Now, of course, we can't look at absolutely everything in here because it's a gigantic store. We're going to look around a little bit. To your left, super popular umbrellas right there with that classic Chinese style as you walk around the parks with those umbrellas. You see it happen all the time. Great stuff. Pandas. I love the panda. I actually think it's my favorite animal outside of Disney. All right. And not, I'm saying figment, you know, of course, Disney. But outside of Disney, Panda, I think, is my favorite animal. And you can see him wearing one of those uh, vests. That's super cute. They've got different purses and plush toys. And, oh, my gosh, these are costumes for dogs. Yes, they are. <laughs> they actually have uh, little dogs that they are showing with those costumes on. You can purchase one, bring back for your pet, pet back at home. They've got collars as well, along with uh, little booties for your uh, dog or cat. A lot of authentic looking Chinese snacks and teas and oh my gosh, maybe I should actually try some of this so we can try it together. I feel like that would make for a, a fun day. Well, we'll have to do that another day. Man, that looks great though. Lots and lots of tea sets here. Very elegant. Some of them priced somewhere between their $42 for that one. If you look to the left, there's one for $68 just to give you an idea. One up above for $38 for that amazing uh, tea service. I forgot what the blue and white china is called. It's, uh, it's very unique and detailed for China. A lot of great looks. My favorite here, 
the dogs right there. $65, I would imagine, for the set, but super nice. China is very well known for their amazing jade sculptures. Take a look at those dragons. A smaller one, $210. Larger one, $480. You can also find elephants, a lot of amazing jade right inside this case. And they've also got it around as well. I believe that's a jade elephant right there, along with several other elephants made of all different materials, all different colors. I like the, uh, the gold one right there with the silver armor. So they have a very, very large one right there. Super nice. Looking for more dragons. They've got those as well. A lot of amazing dragons here. Can you imagine some of these on the, like a desk or a workspace? My gosh. I'm not sure. I'm guessing it's supposed to give you good luck, but look at this one. All right, this is my hand. I'm not going to touch it. That's my hand. That's the dragon. That's a huge dragon. Now, you remember I mentioned puppets a few moments ago that are usually outside. They're inside today. So if you're still looking for those puppets here in China, you can find them here. Now, I'm not 100% sure about the meaning of this uh, sculpture right here. I would imagine there's probably a religious piece to it because there is uh, quite a bit of money in her lap right there. Of course, I will not be touching any of that, nor should anyone. It's all right there. And uh, we can continue seeing kind of more of the same structure and the same statue right there over here. I might have to find out exactly what this is because I'm just not familiar with it. I believe it's part of a spiritual uh, connection in Chinese culture. Not 100% sure, so I'm not going to speak to something I'm not sure about, but they are really, really elegant. Oh, that's super cute right there. The waving kitty. I've seen these before kind of in uh, dashboards, in cars. I believe they're meant to give you good luck. They kind of, I'm not going to touch them, but they wave at you and forward and back and they've got smaller ones as well. These lanterns are fantastic. Imagine one has like a nightlight in uh, in your bedroom. That would be super, super cool. You got dragon ones there too. Again, not 100% sure about this figure, but look at these smaller cute ones. This, <laughs> That's very, very nice. Wow, and they light up too. In this display case here, you can see a plethora of swords from China. Oh my gosh. And they've got individual ones. These are actually uh, $35 plus $10 shipping. You can even get them as a, as a cane, sword cane. <laughs> Wow, that's unbelievable. This one is $65, and it's got the dragon or the glass orb right in its mouth. There's a great chest set here where you can actually fold it up, and it's a little suitcase when you're not using it. And then above, I believe this is called Mahjong. Oh, yes, right there. You can see Mahjong right there with the uh, small, um, they're, they're not... They're not uh, dominoes, but it's it's a similar it's a similar game. Not sure how to play that game. Now the small jewelry pieces inside the House of Good Fortune is extremely popular. I've seen a lot of it purchased all at once, and you can actually see more of it over here. These uh, hair clips right here. Look how intricate those are. Those are in the plastic. These are not. You can see they're a little bit unique. And the uh, the red, the pinks. I know I've seen like a solid black and a blue as well. A lot of different options. They also have some very special bracelets right here, which I believe at least a few of them can be used for spiritual purposes. Not, again, 100% sure about that, but uh, very cool. Over here, we've got the fashion section inside the House of Good Fortune. We can find shirts, and I, I don't know what these very special pieces of attire are called, so I'm not going to name them, but you can see they're, they're very, very special for China. A lot of very authentic feeling Chinese attire, even uh, socks and gloves as well. And in the back, we can find purses and bags. The purses here and bags feature that really nice, elegant flower that you can find around China. And then next to it, you can find more of these uh, larger robes here. Look at that uh, kind of bright red one right there. Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever seen these rugs available for sale before. This one right here is $480. Right there, and there's a lot of different options. Now behind several of these counters here, you can find some really, really nice, I'm gonna call them jeweled small sculptures of different animals. There's some toucans right there. I'm seeing dogs and cats and even carriages and fruit. Wow, oh my gosh, the grand opening Shanghai Disney Resort train set. Wow, it used to be uh, $198, now it's $128. Uh, if I said I was uh, tempted, yeah, that's, I'm tempted. First anniversary of Shanghai Disneyland hat was $16.95, now is $12.95. I, I need to, yeah, that, that might be happening. Somehow I feel like since I wasn't there, I shouldn't get the hat. I'm super tempted by it though. Super, super tempted. I don't know, I'm, I'm still debating it, we'll see. But they've got these pins as well. I've actually got this one right here, sent to me by a very kind friend on my pin board. I still recognize it. It's amazing, it really, really is. They've also got this other one right over there. I don't know, I'm so tempted by the hat. I'm still thinking about the hat, maybe. You can tell I'm having a very hard time stepping away from all this uh, first year merchandise from Shanghai Disneyland. I, uh, uh, hold on, I, I'm not done deciding yet. If I walk away now and they're not available ever again, how comfortable will I be with this decision? Check this out, <laughs> that is so cool. Happy New Year from Shanghai Disneyland. I have never seen this before. 
Either this is from Shanghai Disneyland or this is new. But it says on the side, Walt Disney World. That might be a game changer. I have the grand opening pin sent by a friend. I love it so, so much. And there's a part of me that like kind of equates that with the mug a little bit. I have the mug and the pin. I kind of see those, not the same, but it's like, you know, but they're both kind of at home things. I'm still having trouble getting past the hat. That's uh, uh, giving, knowing that I'm giving it this much thought probably means I should get it. Isn't there a 30% discount or maybe at least 20% on merchandise as well? The thing is I'm gonna go to Shanghai Disneyland and we're gonna need a hat. Oh my, it's so nice though. Oh my gosh, I'm so tempted. I know we weren't there for the opening, but I, I kind of like it a lot. <laughs> Found out that the annual pass holder discount does not work on items from Shanghai Disneyland. So it would be $12.95. All right, one hat, one hat. It's okay, Shanghai Disneyland, first anniversary. I'm gonna get it. I got it, I ended up getting it. I couldn't resist, I, I just couldn't. It's one of those moments where it was that weak moment for Michael and Disney merch. That happens from time to time. Now it is pouring rain outside. It's, it's starting to slow down just a little bit. I'm gonna give it a few minutes and then we'll uh, keep making our way. Before we leave China, however, I do wanna show you the pressed pennies right here of all of the different characters you can find. So the 12 friends from Shanghai Disneyland we learned about before. But this is all Epcot China. This is Epcot China, but it's still got those great 12 friends. Wow. Given the rain today, I think this is gonna be our one country that we do a deep dive of today. But don't worry, we'll be back for more deep dives of other countries around Epcot another day. Inside the Epcot experience here in this area is indeed open. A lot of great looking treats. Most of them are desserts. And I'm seeing the uh, Nutella and orange cream bar. Walking by Canada now, rain is finally letting up. Yay, and I'm tempted by the steak. Hey there. But uh, I think I'm actually gonna go for something new. Made it inside the World Showplace Pavilion from Festival Favorites. We are trying the kibasa and potato piogi, I believe that is what it's called, from Poland. It's served with caramelized onions and sour cream, along with, I believe that is phyllo dough, right there kind of in between. It looks amazing. I am super excited to give this a try. Trying to get a little bit of everything on the first bite. Bon appetit. That is exceptionally good. The flavor to the kibasa is outstanding. Outstandingly good. There is a bit of a, like a, a paprika taste to the end of it, like the end of that sausage or kibasa. So, so good. The onions go super well. I was thinking to myself, kibasa and onions, usually that's a good, pretty good combo. This is like super good combo. I'm gonna try it with the phyllo dough together. So kibasa, onions, sour cream, and a phyllo dough. Bon appetit. Strike that. That's not phyllo dough, that's the potato right there. Super good, super, super good, but somehow the kibasa just with the sour cream and onion is even better. I'm gonna try the potato separately. Not bad, but the kibasa is where it is at. I can put this one up there in terms of ranking. This is delicious. I love the flavor to it. Kind of a smaller dish for $5. Overall, the kibasa, amazingly good. I'm gonna put this one in third place on my list of the Food and Wine Festival. First on top, you know from France, it's the duck confit. Then it's the mac and cheese, the gourmet mac and cheese from here, amazing. Then it's the kibasa from here. That's how good this is. That's how good this is. For dessert, you know I am a huge, huge fan of the cake pops. They're unbelievably amazing, but I'm also trying to find something uh, something new throughout the Food and Wine Festival for us to try together, something we have not tried yet. You know, Shimmering Sips does have the Shimmering Strawberry Soft Serve, but they also have the plant-based banana bread with strawberry basil sorbet. That sounds incredible. I have not. I have not tried that yet. Let's try that. I think I need a haircut now. From Shimmering Sips, we've got the plant-based banana bread. It looks very, very interesting. It is indeed plant-based, so it's not usually what we get. You know, the cake pops would be my go-to dessert, but I wanna see if this can compete. You know, I'm a big fan of banana bread. I wanna see how this one tastes. It's served with a very interesting sorbet kind of whipped cream on the top. It says it's served with strawberry basil sorbet. It kinda looks more like whipped cream, but we're gonna try it together and find out. Strawberry basil actually may be that uh, red jam on top. Let's find out together. Bon appetit. As far as desserts go, it's not bad, especially if you want something not so sweet. <laughs> if the super sweet chocolate cake pop isn't quite your thing, this might be a good viable second place. You know what, strike that third place, the Raspberry Puff in uh, France, that, that's definitely first or second. This one can come in third, just because it's not super sweet, but it's actually a really good flavor. Banana bread's not as, as flavorful as I was hoping, but the strawberry basil on the outside, that really kind of goes really well together. Again, this is not meant for those who love the super, super sweet items. If you like super sweet things, skip this one, get the cake pop. Trust me. But if you don't like super sweet things, my mom's an example of that, this might be perfect for you. Banana bread's a very subtle, subtle hint of banana with the strawberry and the whipped cream. The flavors together, super good. After giving it a few more bites, I can tell you I probably will not be getting it again personally just because I really, really prefer the cake pops or that strawberry puff from France. That's me. But again, not so sweet. Maybe it's for you. Dessert is done now. Let's make our way over to Mouse Gear, see if we can't find any new merchandise. You know, I've seen these quite a few times before. And I know, 
<laughs> I know they're used for some kind of animal, but I'm not 100% sure. If anyone knows what these are used for, let me know, because I, I honestly don't know. And I keep seeing them and I'm thinking to myself, it's not just like for temporary, it's there's something that Disney's set up there so that animals could live there and maybe like a, a natural predator, like a, I don't know, um, dragonfly? Something something that will kind of help our experience in some way. That, that'd be my guess. I don't know though. As we're walking towards Mouse Gear, I can tell there has been an update to the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind building. On top of the building where we know solar panels will be placed in the future, there is something there. I don't know if those are like the covers for solar panels or some something to like stabilize solar panels. Not sure, but that's definitely new. I'm looking forward to seeing the next step of the evolution of construction here, Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's take a closer look inside the new mouse gear. Take a look at this brand new bag here. A very interesting string bag. It's got the straps for your back. We have this one string that you can pull to tighten the top right there. Mickey Mouse. Authentic and original. You know, I think I've walked past them once or twice, but take a look at these new Mickey hand ears. Those are great, I love it. I think that uh, they're probably gonna be very, very popular in the future, kind of Mickey waving from your ears. Oh my gosh, that is adorable. The baby Yoda hat has arrived here inside of Mouse Gear. Fantastic, oh my gosh. This is like a baby Yoda kind of long sleeve shirt, kind of right below him, but that hat, I have a feeling it's gonna be super, super popular. And here's a uh, small baby Baby sweatshirt and like a smaller one there also with that baby Yoda hat imagine a whole family baby Yoda hat and baby Yoda hats yeah I think I've seen this one out and about snack time baby Yoda and that frog in his mouth Wow now we've seen a lot of these new rain jackets lady in the tramp one there I have not seen before foolish mortal next to Disney cat lady and then life is Rough. Fanny packs clearly coming back here. Take a look. You can see the Mickey fanny pack with the ears. Uh, maybe we should. <laughs> that's not enough room for me to carry all my things. Twenty nine ninety nine. Now there's one I haven't seen before. Epcot twenty twenty iPhone case all the way for iPhone eleven, right there, and the ten uh, R. Wow. Even that iPhone case would be buy one get one because of the twenty twenty product deal. Loops my way back around to the Seas Pavilion and Finding Nemo, and I'm hearing mine, mine as I'm coming in here. I remember this building having some of the best AC on property. Let's see if it's still the case. Oh yes, it's like ice. I love it. Ah, to be in a shell again. Eyes open for along the way. Nemo! Come out, come out. The orange with white stripes and looks kind of like you, only smaller. I wonder what kind of jellyfish these are. You know, you see them all the time. It's like, it's definitely not the, the big scary ones. It's the kind of like the standard looking common jellyfish. The last time we saw it, the voices weren't linked up. Now they are. Yay. Woo. Oh my gosh, there's Mr. Ray and another Ray right behind him. See that? Wow. I do have some feelings and there's a Vulcan behind her. Most things are open here inside the seas. The uh, Shark World area is not, but you can actually do some interactive uh, you know, learning right in front, learn about their jaws and all that. Turtle Talk closed, we knew that. Now making our way for one more attraction. We've got 10 more minutes. We're going to Living with the Land. Take a look at those yes, massive yes. barriers up here at Living with the Land. They were not here just a few days ago. Back inside the greenhouse and when it's dark out, you can see the lights illuminate the entire place. I wonder how long the sign will be here. I mean, I love seeing it. I would imagine it's looking actually gonna be for a while. You know, I had never noticed Orchid all the way back to the back right there. Ginger back there. Wow, I'm always seeing something new. You know, I don't think I've seen a fluted pumpkin in its early stages of growth right there. Wow, the bananas have been recently uh, harvested. Wow. This tank is now under renovation. I had no idea we were going to see it empty this time. Wow. I hear about it every time, but there's sorghum. It's right there. It's a big staple for... Uh, human consumption. Look at how quiet and darker it is inside of Living with the Land. Wow. Check out the cut melon right here. Very interesting. And they're all hanging up above. Amazing to see how the, uh, the stem can support them hanging down. Now my guess is that these go around and around throughout the night as well. That, that'd be my guess so nothing dries out but I'm not 100% sure. And just like that, we are making our way out. Thanks so much for being a part of the magic with me today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time, have a magical day.